Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We do have a quorum this morning. That's good, to, always. Uh, we'll begin in prayer. Our God and Father in heaven, we thank thee for this day and all the blessings of it. We thank thee for the health you've given us. Let us to start living another day. Thank you for this community we live in, this country we live in. Thank you for the freedoms we enjoy and the safety and protection we enjoy. Pray for our servicemen and women this time of year. Continue to be with them, bless, protect them, keep them safe, and turn them home to their families as soon as possible. We pray the decisions we make here this day will be for betterment for all those involved and certainly for the betterment of this community. Continue to watch over and care for us. God, guard, direct us in all things. In Christ's name we pray, amen. First item on the agenda is proven minutes of October. Terry moves we approve. Second. Jeff seconds. All in favor? Votes unanimous. Second item, financial report 2019. It's in your packet. I'd be glad to <clears throat> answer any questions you might have. I don't have anything specific to mention. General, how are we, Steve? Uh, we're Just in good shape. Uh, the balance sheet was the third page, and you can see there it says 113,000. Actually, it's 121 today, and um, but you know this is the time of year we got our county appropriation. That's what sort of bumped it up from this number you got here, um, and then our revenues are way, way exceeding our forecast. You can see the zoning permits on page one are at 112 percent already through through October. So you see that 112% on the very right. And then overall, the revenues are at 47%, but that didn't include the county's appropriation that came in after that. So the revenues are about 60% after five months or four months into the fiscal year. Thank you. Questions regarding the financial report? Move Terry moves we approve. Second. Steve seconds. Question discussion on the motion to approve. Hearing none, all in favor? Motion unanimous. Thank you. All right. Item D, subdivision approvals. You're going to do those, Lisa? Yes, sure. The first plat we have is Roy and Angela Martin. They're combining their existing three parcels to redivide them into four tracks. Three of the tracks are two acre lots and one is a 38 plus acre farm lot. They all front on Waterworks Road and all are zoned AR1. The plat has been corrected and is awaiting signatures. Jeff moves we approve. Second by Steve. Question or discussion on a motion to approve. Hearing not all in favor, vote unanimous. Number two. Number two is actually at your desk. It should be the one That at is your. Obermeyer. It's the one at your it's the one in front of your office. Oh, gotcha. Donald Obermeyer um, has property at 45 Tristler Lane in Junction City, combining tract A3, which is 0 .014 acres, a portion of the abandoned railroad land of CSX, and combining it with the adjacent land of Obermeyer, creating tract B, which is 1.014 acres, being in Junction, it has no zoning, it's technically correct, and the plat is awaiting signature. Questions, discussion? Terry moves we approve. Second by Wendy. Question, discussion on the motion to approve. Hearing none, all in favor? Votes unanimous. Three. Well, 
point out for Lisa jumps on this one. This one's three pages. This is the plat she's going to do next. The one, one you guys got to skip to the one that should say King Family Partnership at the bottom. It's three pages. And just before Lisa kicks us off, this is this is if you look at the map up here. This is Wilderness Trace Distillery. This is Lebanon Road, and this was an auction that just happened a couple weeks back. Cut this into multiple parcels, um, and Lisa will walk you through. But the, the plat is actually on three different pages because it was a fairly, as you can see, almost 650-acre farm that fronts three different roadways. Let her take off. This is the King Family Property Division of a, of a 647-plus acre King Family Farm into multiple tracks. It's located at the junction of Lebanon Road, Highway 34, and Ellum Springs Cross Pike, 1.1 mile from the US 127 to Highway 34 intersection. The back side of the property fronts Kentucky Highway 38, Parksville Road, and Junction City. The property is all zoned AR1. The plat is technically correct and ready for signature. However, the one that will be signed, I will note, has lots that are slightly larger than the lots that were condensed on the preliminary approval um, when the lots auction, several smaller lots were purchased together. So yeah. we're just changing the, the lots up a little bit, but it's the same division. For example, right here on the front, Steve Carroll's here for, if, to explain, but for when, it, as you all know, when you go to auction, there were several tracks. They were bid on in different combinations, all together, one, two, three, one and six, you know how they do this. Ultimately, it was five buyers bought it all. Five buyers bought all the tracks. Um, this front track was purchased by the same person. So this lot in the corner here, the, the final plat that's actually gonna go to record, they want this in one track now because they bought both of those. So we gave it preliminary approval for the multiple tracks, but it sold to five buyers in pretty much the same configuration. But some of the lots, they're just gonna combine them back to one bigger farm. Nothing's getting smaller. A few of the tracks actually are getting bigger. And then Steve can maybe go into more detail, but it, it still meets all our requirements. It's AR1, it meets all our lot sizes. There's, it's just sold to five buyers in 12 tracks, is that right? 12 tracks, five buyers. Once it's combined, how many tracks we end up with? Just, you know. I think we said eight, right? I believe so, yes. Because some of them are going to. Eight tracks. Just curious. For example, this one is, is staying together. And again, these are being combined, this track and this track. And then those are together. And then there were, that's where most of where the other buyers were down here on these. It's, it's got road frontages on all sides. Yes. Yeah, it everybody's got road frontage. That's all. There, and there are a lot of easements on it, um, gas lines and yeah, other things. And all the, Steve did a good job depicting all the various easements, all the setbacks for the various tracks. Everything's on there. It meets all our requirements. I make a motion for approval. Jeff moves we approve. Second. Vince seconds. Question discussion on the motion to approve. Hearing none, all in favor? Vote unanimous. Number four. Okay. The next plat we have is for Larry Rose to Barry Carmen. They are neighbors out on Goggin Lane. Mr. Rose is cutting off a small 0.126 acre tract, number A, from his tract and combining it with his neighbor Carmen's property at 825 Goggin Lane. It's all zoned AR1. It's technically correct and ready for signatures today. 
it is the upper just a little upper corner of lot three that is being conveyed with lot two on your plat. Motion to approve. Jeff moves we approve. I'll second. Terry seconds. Question discussion on the motion to approve. Hearing none all in favor. It's unanimous. Number five. This is Edward and Althena Southworth at 3280 Persimmon Knob Road in the Hunters Ridge Division of Junction City. They're dividing their property, which totals 6.176 acres, into two tracks. Uh, one is 4.6 acres, the other is 1.5 acres. Both have frontage on Persimmon Knob. Uh, the plat is has received preliminary approval, waiting for the corrected plat to be signed. Motion to approve. Jeff moves we approve. Second. Steve seconds. Question discussion on a motion to approve. Hearing none, all in favor. Item six. Item six is Doug Little, Shelby Junction Center at zero Shelby Junction Lane. And this plat, like the other that went through earlier, is uh, combining the abandoned CSX Railroad property with its adjacent property owner. Um, property has no zoning classification where it's within Junction City limits. Jeff moves we approve. Second. Wendy seconds. Question discussion on the motion to approve. Hearing none, all in favor? Vote unanimous. New business. Yep. Uh, really just three quick business items. Um, minor. Um, first talk about our December date. Uh, and you should have the 2020 meeting dates somewhere in your packet. We're going to talk about those next. But our December meeting date for this December falls on Christmas, being the fourth Wednesday. So we wanted to let you guys talk about what you might want to do at the, this December meeting. I can tell you today's the filing deadline for December. There are no cases being filed today that I'm aware of unless one of the surveyors uh, bring something in. I am aware that we could have as many as three zone changes filed in January. A lot of folks have been waiting for the new ordinance to go into effect and some different things. So I think we could have three zone changes actually f piled up on top of each other for the January meeting, as well as we need to get the Junction City item back on the agenda. It couldn't be on today because we couldn't advertise it in this short window. Um, so January's meeting could be busy. But the December meeting, it's your all's call. We could cancel the December meeting or I could see what maybe comes in today. Um, we could see if any plats come in because the plats cut off is next Tuesday. But I've talked to Kendall and Steve and AGE. Haven't talked to Nathan, but yeah. none of them or, and Nancy. And I, I don't think anyone's filing any plats for next week either. So we probably could have a pretty light agenda in December. And so it's your all's call. Maybe we cancel the December meeting altogether. Or you guys are going to have to pick a day to move it to, and we'll have to have a special call, treat it like a special call meeting, because it falls on the 25th. So it could be the 23rd, 26th, 27th. But if we move it forward, we're into New Year's, kind of same problem the following week. Or we have it on Christmas. <laughs> but we got to pay Lisa double time. <laughs> so let's not do that. It, it could. Um, t the filing deadline is today for zone changes, site plans, but I've talked to all our professional folks and none of them have indicated they're filing any applications today. So I would know by 5 o'clock. I, I would make a motion then that we uh, cancel the December meeting unless something comes in today that uh, would make you change your mind, in which case you will advise us. I'll, I'll send the packets out like normal. Well, we'd have to pick a date, though. Got to pick a date. Got to pick a date. And we'd have to come back together to pick a date. 
That's the tricky part. Now, if some plats come in, we can still do technical review next week, yeah. and we just bring them to the January Planning Commission meeting to, to do the final approval, yeah. unless one of them's time sensitive. Okay. But again, we've got three of our five folks in the room, and I did talk to AGE yesterday, and they are not filing any applications. We have a motion that we just cancel the December meeting. Second. Got a motion to cancel December meeting, second by Steve. Question, discussion on the motion. We still got a check, right? What's that? We still got our check, right? <laughs> We're going to pay the same. That's good, me. Any other discussion? All in favor of the motion to cancel December meeting? Motion passes unanimous. Next item, very similar. Your 2020 schedules should be in your packet, and that's your next year's meeting dates with your filing deadlines as well as the corresponding meeting dates, tech review, same cycle, first Wednesday's deadline, second Wednesday's tech review, fourth Wednesday's planning commission. And you guys uh, have to formally approve those dates, time, place, location, uh, before the new year kicks off. If you wanted a different time, different date, it, you know, I think everything works pretty good with tech review and the way we advertise, but you all can make any changes to that you see fit. Next year? December the 23rd. 23rd next year. We would have the same situation with Chad this year. Well, it'll be a 23rd, though. We're working on that day, as far as I know. <laughs> we only get up 24th, 25th. But uh, we can take that up later in the year, right. see what's filed. We may not get anything filed, and we may do the same thing. But you never know about plats. You never can tell. Will the dates go on the website? Yeah, yeah. It might even be up. No, they're not up there yet. I wouldn't have done that. They'll be up there this afternoon if they approve them. Because that filing deadline is uh, for January is, you know, coming up quick. So we have to let the folks know when our January fi filing deadline is. Well, the, the 25th is the day before Thanksgiving. Yeah. And we met. This, that was our problem, I think, last week. Yeah. Further into the year, I think we could look at those. We can always change dates yeah. if we need to. Yeah. All right. Do we need approval? Mm -hmm. Yep. Formal. So moved. Jeff moves. We approve. Dates as presented. And Terry seconds. Question discussion on the motion to approve. Hearing none, all in favor, vote unanimous. Last item is the fee schedule. Should be at your desk. It's got some yellow highlights on it. And let me tell you what we're changing on it. It's unfortunate. I'll, uh, the budget committee was going to meet on this, but we ended up punting that for because we're really not changing any of our fees. What you see highlighted in yellow are the Boyle County Clerk's fees. They are changing those effective January 1st, and we're just reflecting their new fees. And to give you an indication what's happening, um, Land use certificates were $16, they're going to $50. Plats were $20, they're going to $50. So right now we charge $105 for a minor plat and $36 to record it. Starting January 1st, it's going to cost $100 to record plat. And that's the Bull County Clerk's Office, that's not us. And that's not specifically them, this is statewide. So the state decided to change all the clerk's fees, and I've got a list of every fee, everything that they do. There's probably 50 different things on here, marriage licenses, liens, deeds, everything went up. And this was a statewide initiative, and it's just filtering on down to us. Problem is we can't really eat that cost. Unfortunately, that has to be passed through. Our plats are staying at $105, but they're going to cost $100 to record. And the surveyors and the engineers need to be aware of this, too, because unfortunately this is going to pass through to the consumer. But uh, we have to raise those to reflect the actual recording costs in the courthouse. If we don't, we'd actually be going backwards on that plat fee. Um, you know, we don't charge $105 and $100 to record it. We, we can't do that. So we're just reflecting exactly the change, and that's what you see on this change. So is this informational only, or do we need to act on this? 
you need to act on the fee schedule. We need to put this in effect yeah. January 1, or the plats that we get in January, we'd actually be losing money on. And then the, the, the professional folks are going to have to relay that to their customers too. Some, some of them just record them on their own. It's a different way we get to recording fees, but we have to have, starting now, $100 to get these put into the courthouse. Well, it says it says land use certificate. You should take the brunt of the, you know, the, the non-publicized uh, raise in fees. I mean, it looks like we did it. I understand. In the future, we'll tell people plats are 205. Now, when they come in, we say it's 141 dollars. That's recording fees and our fees. It'll be 205 dollars to record a plat or even move a lot line in the future. Because we don't have anybody recording here today. Cause well, we're on TV and. Uh, Again, to be fair, and to be fair to our county, they, they didn't initiate this either. It is statewide. No one's really happy about it, um, and it was a surprise to all of us, especially plats going from $20 a page to 50 the three-page plat Mr. Carroll just did. You know, that's, that's $150 plus land use. That's $200 to record that plat this time next year. Uh, they did mention that the last time they were changed. They told us that. What would they say, 15 years, 20 years? Long. Maybe, maybe there should be some sort of informational article in the newspaper that explains that it's a state that has nothing to do with the county or the city. Yeah. There's, and, there's. Know, because, I mean, I think that would be a good information for people to know that it's just not another sort of tax looking thing. I'll be glad to pass this around. There's a lot of stuff. I mean, I mean, you know, it's, it, otherwise it looks like we're, we're imposing a tax yeah. locally. Yeah, at least it can. Not, the, the interesting thing is we're just one small player. Uh, mortgages, deeds, liens, um, marriage licenses. You guys can look at the list. There's a lot of stuff on there that are going up by double or triple. But that's why the newspaper and or any other uh, disseminating groups should, should uh, publicize that yeah. in a way that uh, doesn't put the onus on the, on the local looks like government. Us. You know, otherwise, it just looks like we did it. You, know, it's, you can say anything you want that we know is yeah. in the news today. But, uh, yeah, well, I'll, I'll, I'll reach out to the media and, and see. They, yeah. I haven't seen anything. The list is, again, if, if you're built buying a house, yeah. financing a mortgage, this is just going to pass through to the consumers on all levels. Do you have a line item for the recording fee and then for Yeah, that, you're looking at our invoice. So we check so these things on the invoice, actually. This becomes the invoice if you turn it over. This is the receipt and the invoice. So when someone comes in, we literally check plat, recording fee, this is how our accountant also knows how to push these things into the right line items. Those things pass through our budget and go right back out when we take them to the courthouse. The, uh, if these are clerk fees, why are we collecting those? Because we, we record, because we physically walk the plats over there to record the plats. The surveyors turn in the check and the application and the plat, but we kind of, after we sign it, Lisa takes them over there and records it. We collect right, the money, and then we pass it through, and we and then we go over and pay that back out. It just passes through our budget. Okay. That way, we assure they get recorded, and and we could say it's now their responsibility. What would have to happen though is once we get it all buttoned up, we'd have to give it back to the surveyors and engineers, and they could go record them themselves. It just sort of fits better okay. as we do it, sure. and no one's happy about it. It's a more streamlined process. <laughs> I need another copy of that. I can't reproduce stamps. And yeah. Yeah. And then we and then we get the recorded plat back, and then we okay. build our database and all. Right. Yeah. Okay. And this, uh, the monies are passed. Some of the monies are passed on to the state. Then. I don't know how the clerk's you office. Said it was a pass through. Pass through our budget. Through we we collect the money. The clerk's <laughs> office. Well, the cons well also. Well, I mean, someone has to turn a check in to file plat. It starts with the applicant. <laughs> um, but then the clerk collects those fees. I don't know what portion goes back to the state or, or if it stays in their budget. or. I, yeah, I don't know. They're a state office. DBA is state office. Well, they're county employees, but those fees were approved. This is what was interesting. There was a committee that studied these, and they, this has been going on for a while. 
and then they were draft and then they were proposed and there might even been a public comment period at the state level and then they went into a, the clerk's office notifies these will be the new fees statewide January 1 okay. for all 120 counties made a motion Motion has been made to approve fees as presented. Steve seconds. Question, discussion on the motion to approve. Hearing none, all in favor? Vote unanimous. Thank you. Any other good for the order? This is it. Motion to adjourn. Wendy makes it. Second. Ben seconds. All in favor? Vote unanimous. Thank you.